it's Wes. We've got a unique one for you today. This one came out of nowhere. And honestly, I'm surprised that I answered the email because full disclosure, when I saw this lens, I thought, oh man, this is gonna be terrible. <laughs> I had never heard of this company before, but I gave it a chance and I am glad that I did. So strap in and let's review the Rockstar 50 millimeter tilt lens for Sony E-mount. Now this Rockstar lens is on multiple mirrorless mounts, so it's not just for Sony. Based on the images and the size of this lens, this is an f1.4, I was expecting this to be an APS-C lens. Look how small this is. Especially compared to this Mikey f1.2 50 millimeter lens, both manual focus. And here we have the uh, Viltrox 50 1.8 autofocus. <laughs> Gigantic by comparison. So how is Rockstar making this lens this small? I honestly don't know and I am super confused. And also for comparison, I have something that makes more sense. The teeny tiny Minolta 1.7 50mm lens. It's a classic. It is tiny though. Once I put the uh, E-mount uh, adapter on it, it gets a little bit bigger. Look at that thing. Great vintage lens. But let's focus on the Rockstar. Starting with the categories, as always, with the build quality, this one is obvious. This is an all metal design. This thing is bulletproof, rock solid. You do not want to mess with this. If I threw it at your head, you would be in the hospital for a while. It comes with this metal lens cap, which has its ups and downs. Some people hate the screw on ones, some people like them. But the nice thing about this one is a nice lip around the edge, so it's really easy to get a hold of. But there is a lot of screwing going on to get that out. Then around back, and again, everything's all metal. We've got some knurled wheels and stuff. We'll talk more about usability later on. But this is not a weather sealed lens. You're not gonna take this out in a rainstorm. You've got no O-ring back here. So overall, that's gonna get an eight out of 10 for build quality. Handling, very small and light, as you are already aware. The knurling, however, for the aperture and manual focus, is very smooth, way too smooth. If you're using gloves, it's kind of hard to manipulate. If your hands are dry, they will just slide all over the place here. It has a very nice, well-dampened feel, external focusing, again, not weather sealed at all. <sighs> but the, here's where things get worse. This uh, aperture ring, there's no lock, there, it's not clickable, very easy to bump because the focus ring is right next to it, right here. There's just a tiny little section of lens that uh, doesn't move. Not much to hold on to there. So we have a very smooth front, very smooth middle, and then we have our tilt lock here, and this thing is a nightmare. And that's kind of a shame. Honestly, once I'm done my review and this doesn't have to look all pretty and new, I might actually take some really rough sandpaper to the rings here, because this is just too slippery. In order to ratchet this lock ring for the tilt mechanism, you have to be able to hold on to this tiny little strip of metal, which is even harder to hold on to once it's up against the camera body, and then rotate this against it. In my hand, it's hard enough. On the camera body, it's nearly impossible. But once you get it loosened, the tilt mechanism works great. Then you lock it down and go about your business. So overall, very difficult to use, but is unbelievably small and light for an f1.4 lens. This is a bit of a compromise. You gotta give this a seven out of 10 for handling and usability. Image quality. This is where I was surprised. I have no idea how they managed to make an f1.4 lens this small and compact and relatively cheap at this high quality. Now, when I first got out of the box, I did the straight run-of-the-mill image quality tests on this with it locked in the original position. I would have to guess that I will never have the field of focus as perfectly aligned as it was then because, oh my goodness, it had a very flat field curvature, very good corner-to-corner -corner sharpness, wide open, not amazing, but better than the Viltrox, better than the Mikey, better than the Minolta, and in the corners, better than the Sony Zeiss 55 1.8. At almost every aperture, this is sharper in the corners, which is the height of irony because this is a tilt lens which is specifically designed to make things roll off 
No one's expecting this to be sharp in the corners. Why is it? I don't know. <laughs> but it is. Very strange. Wide open at f1.4. It has a lot of blooming, not terribly sharp. So obviously lots of lenses will defeat this wide open, but once you stop it down to like f4, f5.6, I don't understand what's going on inside this lens. But anyway, let's move on from that. One particularity of this lens, if you look in here, you'll see my aperture. Closed down, and opened. This is my aperture at 1.4. This is my aperture at f2. Did you see anything change? You did not. Comparing aperture to aperture on this lens is very difficult because the way this lens is constructed, nothing happens between 1.4 and 2. If you look in the front, you can see the aperture blades moving between 1.4 and 2, but it doesn't actually affect the end image. Chromatic aberration, not well controlled, but also not the worst. Flare control, I am shocked at how good it is. I expected it to be close to on par with the Mikey and this uh, Minolta lens. It is vastly superior to both of them. In most circumstances, very neutral flaring. Sometimes it veers towards the purple, which is a very Sony-ish thing to do. But for the most part, it resists flaring way better than any other cheap manual focus lens I have used. So overall, once we consider wide open to stop down, we're gonna have an image quality of seven out of 10. Now, yeah, I did talk a lot of praise on this, but wide open, it does not perform that well. And so it can't get that high up the scale. Image character, and that's what we're looking for here. That is our main concern with a tilt lens. And how does it do? Well, I'll let you be the judge, but I am incredibly impressed still. We have a slightly soap bubbly effect, but that bokeh, those balls, almost no onion ringing whatsoever. We do get a lot of footballing in the corners, but that's pretty much unavoidable with a tilt lens like this, unless you have a front element that's just gigantic. And obviously that's not going to happen here. Incredibly smooth bokeh, it doesn't really get nervous with busy spots. You can tilt to create and control those effects. The aperture blades do appear a little bit straight quite early, but the fun thing about this lens is you can stop it down to f8 and still create a shallow depth of field effect if you want, which is super interesting. The flares are kind of uninteresting because it handles flaring pretty well, and it's a little bit unpredictable. The sun stars are fantastic. They are as one might expect a sun star to look. So that's great. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10 for image character. If you wanna play around with image character, this is reliable and fantastic for that. Autofocus, my most controversial category. This does not have autofocus. So that's a zero. You can argue amongst yourselves about that, but I have to compare all these lenses together in one big pot. Value, this is where things get complicated because there's just not a lot to directly compare this to. Well, first of all, this costs $260. Pretty expensive for a cheap third-party lens, but as far as tilt lenses goes, not that bad. The closest thing I can come to this would be the Lens Baby Composer Pro 2 Edge 50, which is $400. Now they have an older one, which is the Lens Baby Edge 50 for $225. Now I have to put out a huge caveat here. Those are not wide aperture lenses. We're talking F3 and up. This is an F1.4 lens, which gives you more options. You don't have to be using the tilt functionality to get a shallow depth of field out of this. So you have a lot of versatility. As a matter of fact, I can't find any other tilt lenses that have a wide aperture at the same time. If you're looking at like the first party lenses, you have Canon and Nikon 50-ish tilt lenses for about $2,000, they're f2.8 and up. And then we have third party ones from Rokinon for $800, again, not wide aperture lenses. And yeah, there's lots of other manual focus wide aperture lenses available for Sony, but I can't compare them directly to it. So yeah, you can get a manual focus lens for less, but you can't do this, what this does, at this level of quality for less. So I really have to give this a 10 out of 10 for value. 
So what's that give us? That gives us a 40 out of 60. Not the most competitive score. Let's look at the scorecard here. As far as a lens like this goes, this competes, this performs way better than I expected it to. Admittedly, maybe I had a bit of a low bar for that, but honestly, I'm considering giving up my Mikey 51.2. Although it has a wider aperture, in some ways it's not as versatile as this lens, and this lens roundly outperforms it for image quality. How? <laughs> anyway, let me know what you think of this sort of thing down in the comments below, and I'll get back to you. If you want to pick up one of these lenses or check out any more image samples, check out those links in the description down below. And if you buy one of these lenses, it can help support this channel and feed my fat cats. So until next time, let's go take some photos.